welcome back to another lesson in Photoshop slash Photoshop Elements. Last week, we talked about the very basics of Photoshop and Elements, about how to get the programs, which ones I recommend, some of the differences between the two, and then um, a very brief overview in how to open up our documents or a new canvas inside of both programs. Today, what I'm going to do is a deep dive inside of the toolbars. So in both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, there is a toolbar with a ton of different tools and functions that you can use on your photos or on the elements that you're working on. So today, I wanna to take you through each of the different tools, share the ones that I use and why I use those tools and give you a very very uh, basic foundation for the different tools that you might be interested in using when we are going through these lessons. Also, many of these tools are ones we're going to be using again and again and again as the year progresses. So I thought it would be good to give you a foundation in what the tools are first before we move into using them all the time. So let's start today inside of Photoshop Creative Cloud, which is what I have here on my desktop. So the toolbar for the Photoshop Creative Cloud is over here on the left side. It's in a column with a, a bunch of different tools. And then next to a lot of them, there's a tiny little arrow in the bottom corner. And I'll explain why that's there in just a second. If the toolbar is not showing up on your dashboard or what I refer to as, you know, the screen that we're looking at here, then you'll want to go up to the window menu item and make sure that there is a check mark next to tools here at the bottom. That is the uh, what signifies whether or not this toolbar is visible to you. So beginning at the top, this this first little tool here is your move tool. And actually in order to demonstrate these, I am going to open up a, um, a journaling card that we can kind of do some of the things to, so you can see how they're working, how the how the different things work while we're um, going through today's lesson. So this very first tool is the move tool, and that allows you to move different elements on your canvas. Now, because we only have the one piece here, um, there is really nothing to move. But let's say that there was something else, like maybe I took this card and I added it on top of, on top, right? This move tool allows me to grab different elements and move them around the screen. Okay, now there is this little bottom arrow in the corner of the move tool. What that means is that you can actually click and hold on the tool and it's going to open up a submenu where there are more versions of this type of tool. For the move tool, I actually never use the artboard tool and I can't even really speak on what it does because I've never used it before. I just generally only use the move tool for this top one. The next one down is the marquee tool. So this one, if you click and hold, is going to give you different shapes of the marquee tool. I typically only use the rectangle or the elliptical, which is a circle or an oval. I've never really used the single row or the single column marquee tool. And so again, I can't really speak on those, but I do use the rectangular and the elliptical marquee tool all the time. So what the marquee tool does is, is it allows you to click and drag a box over a section in order to um, highlight a particular spot in your journaling card or on your photo. Once you have the one area selected with your marquee tool, you can do a lot of different things to just the inside of the box. For instance, I can right click in here and I can actually copy just the section that I have selected, or I can cut out of the entire picture just the section that I have selected. I can fill this with a different color. I can put a stroke around the area that I've selected. There's a lot of different things that you can do by just highlighting one specific area, um, which 
we will end up using this tool a ton when we actually go to work within our journaling cards here in a couple months. I'll show you how you can take a pre-existing journaling card and customize it to work for you, specifically using that marquee tool. So it basically allows you to create a selection of one specific spot on your layout. The difference between the rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool, let me go ahead and unselect that, is that one draws in straight lines with right angles and the other one does circles or ovals or whatever shape you want to do. I will say that when you're using either one of these tools, if you hold down the shift button while you are dragging out your shape, it will keep it to scale. So to draw a perfect circle, you'll want to hold down that shift key and create your circle. Same for the rectangular one. If I hold the shift button, it's going to draw a perfect, oh, actually it does not do a perfect square. Interesting. Oh, yes it does. I just didn't have it down right. If you hold that shift button, it'll create a perfect square. So it won't allow you to do a rectangle. Um, really that's the only two shapes you can create with this tool. So it'll just allow all of your sides to be exactly the same length. So if you're wanting to create a square or a circle, that's a trick for you. The next tool down is called the lasso tool. And this allows you to make free handed selections. So you can like, <laughs> and I don't use this one very often either because I find I don't really need to. Whoops. So like I can, I, I'm thinking I can draw a circle around this and then it allows me to just use that piece, right? So I can, you're essentially lassoing the element on your screen and selecting just that piece. I don't generally use the lasso tool because I find that I can get all of my selections that I want using the rectangle or the ellip uh, elliptical marquee tool that I don't necessarily need the lasso. But if there's ever a reason why you would, you know, only, it's harder to control, I think. But if you only want a specific section, then it does let you fine tune where you are selecting, if that makes sense. Okay, so this one also has a sub menu. Again, I never use these other ones, <laughs> but they are there if you want to experiment and uh, see what happens. The next one down may show up for you as the quick selection tool. Um, this one in the sub menu also has the magic wand tool. And I use the magic wand tool much more than I use the quick selection tool, but I'll show you both. The quick selection tool allows you to click into a specific area in order to select the object or the color that you're looking for. So the best way to show you this is maybe on the yellow here. I can click inside of the yellow and drag my mouse around until it, it determines, wait, you're trying to select all of the yellow and it will select the yellow box for me. The nice thing about this is it does, um, like I don't have to draw the box and include the white as well. It does totally select the yellow portion uh, exactly around the outside. So now if I were to cut this out, there'd be no white on the outside of this yellow piece. Um, the magic wand tool works a lot the same, except when you, you don't have to click and drag, you can just click on the color and it will select everything in that color. The difference being that now it is not selecting the number t the zero or the two or the story because those are separated by a different color. If I want to add those, I can hold the shift button and then it allows me to include those pieces as well. And it's a lot harder to manage <laughs> this portion, right? You can kind of see how it's a struggle to get all the little marching ants to disappear. So for something like this, I would very likely use the quick selection tool in order to quickly get the numbers in there rather than using the magic wand. But the magic wand is a quick and easy way to select a particular color in your layout. It's like I can select the zero or the three, but it's not going to select the outline. So keep that in mind. It's just kind of honing in on a color and selecting anything in that space anything that touches the spot that you are clicking that's the same color. 
Okay, so that's magic wand and the quick selection tool. Next we have our crop tool, which I want to deselect everything. Uh, in order to deselect, you can hold down the control or the command button and, and press the letter D for deselect, or you can go up to the select menu and then hit the deselect right here and that will also deselect everything. Okay, so crop tool. The crop tool is very self-explanatory. It lets you crop down your image to a particular size. For this one, there's going to be a lot of um, nuance in how you want to crop your photos. You can crop it based on a specific uh, weight, not weight, <laughs> width, height, and resolution that you choose, or you can do it based on a ratio. Um, they have ratios set up in the menu, so like a square is a one-to-one, um, a two to three would, or a four to, you know, a four to six, four by six, two by three are the same types of ratio. You can also do, um, like preset Im uh, inches. So this is a four inch by five inch at 300, eight and a half by 11 at 300. So there are some presets here. Generally when I am doing my cropping, I like to use the width height resolution so I can determine exactly what I want my image to be. So I could type in four inches and six inches for, um, actually this would be opposite. So six inches for width and four inches for height, 300 pixels per inch, and that would give me a six by four journaling card or a six by four photo. Um, the nice thing with this is you can type in inches or pixels. So whatever you are working with, whatever size constraints you're working with, um, it allows you to add those in as you are cropping your image. Okay, so that is the crop tool is just for cropping stuff down. There are some other pre or some other sub menu crop tools as well. There's a slice tool, a slice select tool, and a perspective crop tool. Those again, I never ever, ever use them. So uh, they could be fun to play around with and see what they do. But generally for scrapbooking purposes, we really just need that crop tool. This next one down is another tool that I never use. Uh, this is the, it's some kind of frame tool. So it creates a spot to put a photo in, I suppose. Um, for anything that I do, this tool is not necessary. The next one down though, however, is very necessary. This is the eyedropper tool. So it looks like a little eyedropper and this one allows you to pick up color. So let's say I want to add text to uh, a white canvas, but I want that text to be the same color as these three boxes. Well, I can come in with my eyedropper and click on this pink and now I have picked up the pink down here in my color swatches. So when I add my text, my text is going to be the pink color. I could do the same thing for yellow, and now it switches to the yellow, or I could do it for the gray, and now it has switched to the gray. Also, I can go real tiny here and grab the orange if I wanted to, and now I've got the orange. So the eyedropper is a great way to pick up the colors inside of your documents in order to use them in other ways on your layout. The sub menu for this one are a bunch of other tools that uh, again, I, I don't really use. I only use the eyedropper tool. There is a, I don't even know, 3D material eyedropper tool, color sampler tool, a ruler tool, note tool, and one, two, three count tool. I have no idea what any of those do. For uh, anything that I do or that I show you, the only one you're going to need is the eyedropper tool. Next down, this one will likely show up as the spot healing tool, um, which I believe, I never really use this one either, but I believe that what this one does is it allows you to um, pick up some of the, or I guess we're gonna watch it right here. Oh, so you can highlight areas where you have stains or marks on your page that you don't want to be there, color over top of it, and it's going to add whatever is surrounding it, the texture or the color, and it will add that in that spot. Uh, generally though, I am pretty much just using the red eye tool for this one. The red eye tool allows you to select 
over top of people's eyes where there's that red glow and it will uh, filter that out and make their eyes look normal. <laughs> so the eye drop or the red eye tool is one that I use uh, not super often because most of my photos don't have red eye anymore, but a lot of the older ones where I'm taking photos of photos, those tend to have red eyes in them. So, so this is a tool that comes in handy for that. Next up is the brush tool. So the brush tool is exactly what it looks like. It is a paintbrush. It is a paintbrush that you can use to paint color. So like right now I have this orange color selected. So if I click and drag, it's going to paint orange onto my canvas. I can change the size of the circle. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can also change the type of stroke, quote unquote stroke, that my paintbrush is doing. Right now I have it where it is just solid. So if I click and I don't drag, it's just going to put a perfect circle with no, with no fuzziness or anything around it onto my canvas. I can, however, come up here to this top menu and I can select different brush strokes. Like here's an example of a different one. This one, as you can see hopefully on my screen here, has a jagged line around it. This one is going to give you more of a, a brush at the end looking stroke. I also have a little bit of opacity on this one. Right now it's 48% opaque. So I can bring that all the way back up and now it's going to be solid. Um, you can play with this to create layering if you want. So if I were to go twice, there's now this layer of color in between. So it's just, when you think of, a, of the brush tool, I want you to think of using a paintbrush. Um, the one that I use the absolute most is the filled in circle because a lot of times, for example, if I, let's put this away, if I wanted this pink portion here to not have the number one in the story, I can use my eyedropper to pick up the pink and then I can use my paintbrush to just, oh, I don't want it to be opaque, not opaque. I can color over top of it and now that's gone, right? Now I just have a pink box. I could do the same thing for the yellow, grab my paintbrush tool and just paint over top and it's gone. I could do the same thing for the gray and now I just have three color blocks instead of having the title there at the top. So I do like to use the paintbrush for those types of things. There is also a pencil tool inside of this same submenu. The pencil tool is also exactly how it sounds. It's like using a pencil where you can create markups. So let's change my color to black and I can draw essentially like a pencil on my canvas here. I don't really use the pencil tool <laughs> ever, um, but that is essentially what it is. And if you are somebody who draws um, or is creating your own types of art on a canvas, then that might be a tool that you would probably use. Next up is the clone stamp tool. There's also a pattern stamp tool. I generally just stick to the clone stamp. The clone stamp, um, let me bring these numbers back. Okay, so the clone stamp, what you're going to do is hold down the alt key and you'll get this little, it looks almost like a compass-ish or like um, like a, a bullseye or a, yeah, I guess a bullseye is maybe the best way to explain that. And um, what you want to do is go into an area that you want to clone or copy, right? And you're going to click. So then what I can do is I can actually color on top and it will add, it'll add the color that it had or the section that it had cloned onto the area where I click and drag. Now let's say that I want to clone this section right here, right? So I can click up above because what's going to happen is when I click and drag, it's going to essentially paint that section on. It's like it's the clone is going to clone anything from this point to the right. So if I were to just keep going, you can see that it's actually cloning the entire column. Does that make sense? Or if I go down, here, let's do this so we can 
Okay, so or if I go down, then it clones anything from that column of space, right? So I could essentially create the cards again. So the clone tool can be a little finicky to play with. However, it has great use when you are editing a photo. And let's say in your photo, you've got a forest background or some kind of grassy background. And then there is like a random person. <laughs> so you can use the clone tool to actually clone some of the foliage and paint that on top of the person. So the person is no longer in your photo. And instead, it's just a grassy or a foresty background. So that's generally when I am using the clone tool is when I need to um, take out a piece of my photo without actually cropping it out of my photo. So that's the clone tool. Uh, next down, we have the history brush tool and the art history brush tool. I don't ever use these. You won't see me using these in any of the future lessons. Uh, so ones that you can play around with, but ones that I don't necessarily know what it is they do. Below that, we have the eraser tool. So we've got uh, the eraser, which is exactly how it sounds. If I click and drag, it's going to erase the sections of my page here, right? Or of my, my card. Okay, so that's my eraser. Um, the magic eraser allows you, just like the magic wand, to select certain areas of your card and it will erase everything that is touching the spot where you click that has the same color uh, the same color going on right so I could erase whoop we'll come back to this in a second but like let's say the yellow here right I can erase all of that yellow there by just clicking inside of the yellow one of the things with the magic wand and with the magic eraser is if the colors are really similar, like this is a really light gray that's next to the white, and this is a really light pink that's next to the white, sometimes it gets confused and it will actually select all of it. So like the pink, it did okay, but the gray, it's selecting everything around here, okay? There we go. So you want to bring your tolerance down if it is selecting too much. So it was at about 35 and when I selected it grabbed everything that looked too light, right? Because it's determining that all of these are similar enough that we want to get rid of them. So if I bring my tolerance down to 10 and then click, now it's differentiating between the gray and the white. So one thing to keep in mind when you are using the magic tools, the magic wand and the magic eraser. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it back to just my eraser tool. The next one down here, the next tool in our column is the paint bucket tool. So this one allows you to take whatever color you have selected right now, I have black, and I'm going to paint on a section of my page. So if I click here on the pink, it's going to paint the pink black, right? Same with the black. And this one might have the same effect as before it does, where it can't differentiate between the light gray and the white. So up here, there's another tolerance bucket. So you could bring that back down again, and now it's going to select the gray. So I have my tolerance set to 10. So paint bucket just lets you paint in the different things. I can paint in my numbers and make them bold instead of an outline. Um, it also allows us to change the color of some of our cards if we like when we work on customizing our digital cards later. So let's undo all of that and then we'll move on. There is also a gradient tool in here and a 3D material drop tool. I don't ever use these ones. Um, the gradient, whoa, yeah, I don't even know how to use the gradient. So I won't teach on that one, but uh, if those are tools that you are interested in learning more about, they are located inside of the paint bucket sub menu tools. And I always highly recommend Google searching for a video on how to use tools if you don't know, and if they're not ones that I'm teaching on. The next tool down here is going to be the blur tool. That's what's going to show up for you most likely, which looks like a little raindrop. And what this does is when you click and drag over the um, image here, it's going to blur 
the elements behind it, right? So for this one, we're blurring the number one and the story. Um, this is with the mode on darken. So you can see that it's darkening up those colors and making them a little bit more saturated. But there's also, let me undo all of this. There's also a mode where you can lighten it. And when you lighten it, it's going to disappear more into the background, okay? Because it's lightening up those elements. So that is the blur tool. However, there is another tool inside of this menu that I like to use quite often called the smudge tool. And the smudge tool is different because it's actually going to smudge together the pieces. So if I click and drag over the story, you see that it totally smudges it up. This is a great tool to use if you are editing some of your journaling that you don't want to be read. Uh, let's say you've taken a photo of your layout and you have journaling that is personal, you can take the smudge tool and smudge out the text so people cannot read it. And we'll talk more about some of those pieces later on in the year. The next subset here is one of my favorites. These are tools I use all the time, the dodge tool and the burn tool. The sponge tool I don't really use. Um, it works very similar to these, but it is more of a spongy pattern. I typically stick with the dodge tool and the burn tool. The dodge tool is a lightening tool. So when you click and drag, it's going to lighten up the elements underneath it, which you can see happening there, right? And then the burn tool is the opposite. So it's going to darken up the elements underneath it. Okay, so there we go. So that is the dodge tool and the burn tool. The dodge tool looks a little bit like a lollipop. The burn tool looks like a hand making it the letter O, <laughs> essentially. Underneath that, we have a tool that is specific to Creative Cloud. So this is a tool that you are not going to find inside of Elements called the Pen Tool. The Pen Tool allows you to create custom shapes by uh, clicking and adding little boxes that connect to each other, right? So I can essentially, whoops, nope, undo. I can essentially create a square around the outside of this, right? And I'm not doing a very good job, but you can be much more precise with the pen tool. Um, and it's going to let you select areas. So once I have the shape all connected, it becomes this solid line and it allows me to right click and do a whole bunch of different things. I can create a stroke path um, which I can use the pencil to do so. There's a bunch of different tools you can use, but you can use the pencil and say, okay. And then I can also make this into a selection where we've got the marching ants and now, you know, obviously I can do other things. Now, if I deselect because I created the pen stroke, there's actually this line for the exact shape that I made earlier. When I used to work with my mom, um, one of the things I was helping her with was creating digital patterns for sewing. And the pen tool came in handy because I could create my own shapes and my own drawings in order to make those patterns in a digital form. So the pen tool comes in handy for things like that. It's much more of a design type of tool. So as long as you are not designing anything, you probably won't need the pen tool. Um, but if you do, it's inside of Photoshop Creative Cloud. It's not inside of Elements. Our next tool is our text tool. For this one, there's a couple different options. We have the horizontal type, the vertical type, and then a vertical mask and a horizontal mask. So right now I've got the horizontal type tool, which is generally the one that I'm using, and that puts my text in a horizontal block, right? If I were to do the vertical, that's going to put my text in a vertical type. So this might be really fun for creating a title, um, but it would be really hard to read as just <laughs> text. I will show you a little bit later how to create text that is vertical, but that still has the words easy to read. We'll do that a little bit later in the year. The um, masking ones I don't ever use. But again, Google can be your best friend if you are interested in finding out what the heck those things do. 
The pointer tool is next, um, what, a direct selection tool, right? Which we don't really use. I use the move tool more than I use the selection tool. The tool underneath that is our shape tool. And this one I use all the time. So there's rectangles, there's a rounded rectangle, there's an ellipse, there's lines, there's a polygon and custom shapes. I'm generally using the rectangle, the ellipse, and the lines in order to create my cards. These are what you can use to create shapes on your page. And these shapes can become holding places for photos or design elements if you're working within, a, within layer templates. And that's something we will also cover later on this year. So we can create rectangles, we can create circles, and we can also create custom sized. So right now I have the rectangle shape. If I do not click and drag, I only click, it's going to bring up a sub menu that lets me put in a custom width and a custom height. So let's say I want this to be two inches by three inches. And then now I've got a two inch by three inch square. Okay. So that is our shape tool. Um, the other one is the ellipse. So for this one, if you want it to be a perfect circle, you have to put in the same width and height. So I could say like one inch by one inch, and that's going to give me a perfect circle. That's a one inch circle. Okay. The hand tool is just a way to another, it's essentially like a move tool. Again, I just generally use the move tool. Uh, this one is the zoom. So you can zoom you can click on the zoom tool and click to zoom in. If you want to zoom out, you hold down the alt key and zoom out. Okay. And then the dot, dot, dot at the bottom is the, um, like bonus, bonus tools. Or what you can do is you can actually, um, edit your toolbar. So if you click and hold in this section, you can edit the toolbar and any of the tools that you do not use, you can add them into the extra tools and then they won't show up in that left hand bar. So like, for example, I never use the frame tool. So I can throw that over here and now it's outside of my toolbar. I don't have to worry about it. But if forever, if for any reason I ever wanted that, it's now inside of here, right? So I can come back. I can always come back and get it. All right, so that is that. Underneath that, we have our color swatches. The top one here is the main color that's going to go on top. So anything I do is going to be this color. The white in the background is the background color. So if I were to create a new canvas, if I were to, um, really that's it. If I were to create a new canvas or if I were to create a background layer, then it would be white. Uh, this tool right here is the, let me remind myself what this tool is. Oh, the quick mask mode, which I don't ever use that. And this one is the uh, change screen mode, which I also never use. I always like my screen to look like this, but there is the full screen mode. There is the full screen mode with a menu bar. And then there's the standard. I generally just use the standard. So those are all of the tools inside of Photoshop Creative Cloud. Just as a quick recap on the tools that I use the most, I use the Move tool, the Marquee tool right here, the Magic Wand or Quick Selection tool, Crop tool, Eyedropper, Red Eye, Paintbrush, the Clone tool, the Eraser, the Paint Bucket, Smudge, dodge and burn um, and then the text and the shape and I guess zoom sometimes too but text and shape and zoom those are what I use a lot of the sub menu tools I don't use um, and we won't really be using them very often inside of these future tutorials so if I had any suggestions to you, it would be to make sure that those tools that I just mentioned, and I will also put a list of them inside the blog post that goes with this, I would make sure that those are the ones that you have easy access to um, and just test them out a little bit. Play around with the tools and see, like pull up one journaling card like this and see how those different tools affect the piece that you're working on. Okay. 
So next let's move into elements and this portion is going to be much shorter since you already know what all the different tools do. But inside of Photoshop elements, I wanna show you where the different tools are located. Similar to Creative Cloud, they are over here on the left in a toolbar menu. This one is set up a little bit different in that they are grouped based on the types of actions they do. So at the top we have view, which gives us our uh, spyglass or our zoom, and then also our hand tool. Then we have selection tools. So here we've got the move tool, we've got the marquee tool, the lasso, and the magic wand. Now, here is something I want to make sure to mention. In Photoshop Creative Cloud, you could click and hold in order to get a submenu. Inside of elements, that's not where you're going to get your, var your variability or your, your different ways, I suppose is what I'm trying to say, of using the tool. Instead, they are going to be down in the submenu here at the bottom. So for the marquee tool, down at the bottom, I have the rectangle or the ellipse, which are the two that I generally use. The other ones, I don't really use, so it's totally fine that they're not here, right? So you can select which one you want to do, the rectangle or the ellipse. Um, if you want to create your own, there is also this fixed size that allows you to put in your own dimensions. So that is another thing to keep in mind here. So we have the marquee tool. So the lasso, there's also the submenu things, and then here for the magic wand, or this is the quick selection, there is a magic wand here as well. It looks like this one, magic wand tool. So we have the quick selection, the magic wand, and then there are other pieces down here as well. When you select a different tool, it does change what the icon looks like up on your main menu as well. We have the red eye tool, this is the spot healing brush. So this is the one where you can select an area of your photo and it will filter out the stain and just put in the same um, color or texture that it's surrounded by. We have the smart brush, which I don't really use. Um, I use the paint brush, not the smart brush. But there is the clone tool, which has the, or I guess they call it the clone stamp. And then there's also the pattern stamp. I generally just use the clone stamp. There is the blur tool, which also has the smudge as well. There is the um, dodge tool, which also has the burn tool down at the bottom in the set menu. Okay. Then we have, and these are considered enhance tools. Next we have the drawing tools, and for this one we've got the paintbrush, we've got the eraser and the magic eraser, we have the paint bucket, there's the gradient tool, which I don't ever use. Um, in Photoshop Creative Cloud, it was the gradient tool was within the paint bucket submenu. Here, there are two different items, which is interesting, right? The color picker, so this allows us, which in Creative Cloud, it's called the eyedropper tool. In this one, they call it the color picker. This is the one that allows you to select a color in order to pick that color up. We have the um, shape tool, and in the submenu, you've got your rounded rectangle, your squared off rectangle, the ellipse, the polygon, um, the line. There is the custom shapes, which you can select custom shapes, and this one also has a star which is interesting too. But generally I'm using the rectangle, the ellipse, and the line are my main ones. We have the text tool and down at the bottom all those different options for how you want your text to look. And then this one has a pencil tool but no pen. So there is a way to draw on a page but in a different way than you can with the pen tool. Finally, we've got our modify tools. So we have the crop tool here at the bottom. We've got, and then the other three I, I generally don't really use. So there's the recompose tool, uh, the content aware move tool, and the straighten tool. Possibly the straighten tool is one that I might use in order to help straighten out my photo, but generally I don't use that at all. <laughs> it's usually just the crop tool. And then we have our color swatches here at the bottom. So the foreground color being black and the background color being white at this point. So that is the tools, the main tools for 
Photoshop elements. So most of them are exactly the same. And this is where before I mentioned that there's not a ton of difference between Photoshop, Creative Cloud, and Photoshop elements. The functionality is a little bit different, but once you get used to the program that you're working in, it becomes really easy to use. So it's just figuring out uh, where the things are in the program that you have and getting used to using those. Friends, this is where I am going to leave you for today. Uh, what I want to encourage you to do this week in order to practice some of the things that we've talked about is I would love for you to play around with the main tools that we're going to be using inside of the tutorials moving forward. Um, specifically, play around with the paintbrush and paint bucket, the two magic tools, the magic wand and the magic eraser. Um, the marquee tool is a great one to get some experience working with, and the shape tool is another one to um, play around with and just see how it functions. Then I would also encourage you to add the main tools that we're going to be using into your menu. And uh, if there are tools that you know you're never going to use inside of Photoshop Creative Cloud, you can also move those so that they're not inside of your tool menu anymore. Um, that way it, it declutters that space a little bit for you. Next week, I am going to have another basics video. So the month of April is all about Photoshop basics. So um, today we talked about tools. Next week, we're going to be talking about rulers and guidelines and what those are, how to use them, and just how they can make designing our layouts a little bit easier. So we're going to talk about those next week. And then the last week of this month, we're going to talk about layers, how Photoshop uses layers, um, and give you a little bit of insight into that before we move into specifically talking about photos and photo editing in the month of May and June. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave those for me in the comments section. Um, and hopefully this was helpful and gave you some different things to try over the course of the next week. All right, friends, until next time, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I